You mentioned earlier that with the CARES Act, the the student loans were automatically deferred. Did I get that correct? Yes, sir. Yep. When you say that they're deferred, does that in, does that also increase include excuse me any interest that's yes. being compiled month over month? Yep. So interest and payments have been deferred and stopped until December, which is great. So that's in a sense from April to December, that's about eight months of interest not accruing. So I still, when, you know, when I made the post in my client group, I told my clients, if you can still make your payments because now it's all going, it's, you know, not all of it, but more of it's going to principal because now interest is not accruing. Correct. So you're, you're in a better spot. So I would definitely still advocate it, but yeah, it's, it's interest and payments deferred until December 20, uh, 2020. Student loans, stick into that for one second. Student mm -hmm. loans jam up so many people from our community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you might have taken out $10,000, but now you owe $50,000 over the years. Yep. Is that interest something that these institutions will forego or will they work with you if you're willing to start making payments? Or is it just you know, they're like, no, we're going to keep beating up your credit because yeah, you can ask me, you correct me if I'm wrong. I know in most cases, after seven years, things leave your credit report. That doesn't correct. apply with student loans. You, federal you, you, student loans, correct. No, federal student loans, correct. Yes. That's on your credit for as long as you owe. So yep. it's not like you can dodge them. But mm -hmm. will they work with you because so you know people are paying more in interest than they actually have in, in, in terms of the principal? Yep. So what I usually tell people to do, because student loan debt is I advocate college. Go to college, get your degree. You know, I do not advocate for people not getting the degree, but student loan debt could be a trap if you go to college, you change the degree, deferring payments, deferring, because remember, every time you defer, you're still accruing interest. And that's where people don't realize it. So now you get out of college, just like you said, that 10,000 turns into a lot more. Um, and then people just don't, the biggest mistake that people make with student loans is they just don't pay them. There's so many resources out there, even without COVID, um, you can go into what's called a forbearance plan. If you are face, facing financial hardship, you can uh, put your student loans into a, a financial forbearance, still going to accrue interest, but at least you're not making monthly payments and it's reporting positive on your student loans. Now, we tell everyone to, to go to a, a website. It's called student loans. So just like how I say it, studentloans.gov.gov. So student loans with an S at the end of loans, .gov, .gov, and what you can do is with your federal student loans, you can consolidate your student loans, uh, whether they're negative or whether they're in good standing, and put it into one payment. The great thing about this, Sean, is that you can do it based off of your income. So let's say if you're, you went to law school, you have $200,000 student loans. You come out, you know what? I couldn't get a job as an attorney. I'm working at Wawa, I'm working so-and-so, I'm only making $25,000 a year. You consolidate your loans into an income-based payment plan and it's gonna base it off of your $25,000 a year and then now you don't gotta make a payment. Well, a lot of people, well, I see it all the time, and the reason why I say attorneys is, or attorneys and doctors, they have the most student loan debt and I see it happen a lot where they just don't pay them and next thing you know, you try to go buy a house, you can't because you haven't paid your student loans in four or five years. Exactly. You know what I mean? I, and, and even with teacher, I see that happen a lot with teachers too. They come out, they have you know, the student loan debt. So if you go to studentloans.gov, you can consolidate and refinance your student loans into one payment. Right now, if, if you're, if you're um, in good standing, don't worry about it because you don't gotta make payments anyway. But if you're in negative standing, if you're in default, you have negative, you, know, you have collections in student loans, you go to this website, you consolidate them, you get them out of negative standing, you put them into one loan, and now that's actually helping you build your credit, and then you don't gotta start making payments until December because they're deferred. 
You know what I mean? So student loan debt is a tr- it's crazy. I feel bad sometimes when I see how much student loan debt people have. But when you go into an income-based payment, and as long as you do it for 10 years, they usually will forgive all or some of the, the rest of the loan. So that's why it's important to do income-based uh, because they will forgive some of your loan as long as you commit to a 10-year uh, income-based payment. Okay, let me make sure. I was going to let that go until you said that last part. Yeah. If you go into an income-based payment, you say you're making $25,000 a year, but you can only afford to put $1,000 a month toward your student loan, Mm -hmm. which you actually owe Mm $200,000. In some cases, you're saying, hey, if you pay on time for 10 years, they will forgive the rest of that $200,000? Did I understand that correctly? Yep. So you ha- you have to go into an income based payment, um, but if you're only making twenty five thousand dollars a year, there's no way that you would be paying a thousand dollars a month if you owe two hundred thousand dollars to the loan. Your payment might be zero. Like we've seen it where people's payments are actually zero based off of their income. Um, now every year you have to recertify. You have to recertify every year. So if you start making more money, you might start making payments, but um, you know, when you go to studentloans.gov, there's like a little calculator on there and you can see that where if you do an income-based payment, you make payments for X amount and they'll forgive the rest. You know what I mean? And um, this, will not, this will not reflect poorly, negatively on no, your credit report. Not at all. Wow. Yeah, this is one of the things that we started doing for clients uh, at no cost um, because we're not a student loan consolidation company. So, you know, we're not, a licensed student loan consolidation company. So we just assist our clients with doing it. So they don't got to pay. Like you could even Google it. Student loan consolidation companies charge 800, 900 is, is crazy. It's another industry that we just want to change. So we just do it for free. If you're a client of ours, we do it for free. And if, if you're not a client of ours, you go to studentloans.gov and you can do it for yourself. And it actually helps your credit because now you're getting this negative student loans out of negative standing putting them in positive standing and making payments, putting them in income-based payment. And it's, it's amazing because now you'll be eligible. If you're trying to get an FHA, FHA mortgage and you owe student loans, it's not happening. It's not happening. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.